Interesting people make interesting stories. Here in Savannah, Georgia, where art seems to take center stage, we're gonna introduce you to a local artist. Let's meet Taffy. Studio Le Poof, obviously named after all this hair. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Taffy LaPlante and I am located at the Art Center at Savannah City Market here in Studio 6. So tell me a little bit about, you know, you and what it is that you create in this space and what kind of magic you bring to the canvases. Yeah, absolutely. So. I essentially just draw and create just really dope and unique portraits for dope and unique people. Besides just creating in this space, I also have like my little merchant shop as well. well. That's good. We, we all need a little swag, you know, oh, just to sure. I have the merch. Like I have like my online store that I do a lot out of, but I also like having like a physical item that you can kind of just take away with you yeah. after kind of like being in here and experiencing things. So I have like a couple of prints, I have pins that I've made and like stickers. I have always been this like eccentric Afro-Latina um, that's just very happy and proud of her heritage um, and that kind of like spicy personality that I have. And I love bringing that energy into my artwork. And actually the first thing that people notice when they come in is not my art. Like the first thing that people notice right away is this wall of my faces. <laughs> now, I am a vain person, but I'm not that vain where I just have multiple self-portraits of myself. This wall is actually art trades that I have done with other artists. So as a portrait artist, especially starting out, I didn't have references of like who to really draw. You know, I could like draw strangers, but it still wasn't like, I wasn't having that emotional connection yeah. at the end of the day. So I would reach out to other artists who were also portrait artists and be like, hey, like, if I draw you, can you draw me? And just kind of like that is the have best. this thing. And it was super fun, because like I love looking at that wall and seeing everybody's like different styles. But And you remember the experience. Yeah, I remember the experience and you know I make that connection with the new artist. I love expressing with color and like graphic lines and really listening to other people's stories and how they identify with themselves as well and what personality they want to portray to the world. I feel like just as people in general, you know, we identify ourselves as one thing, but can be all these different types of people to others at the end of the day. And I kind of like showing that juxtaposition with my work. What are your favorite uh, mediums to work with? I mean, I'm, there's a lot of things that you can create with. So what are some of your favorite tools? I've always loved charcoal. Charcoal has been my number one since day one. So I see some big pieces and they obviously kind of go together. I mean, we have one over here. They do. <laughs> we have obviously a work in progress over here. We also have something back there that yeah. have the same kind of look and style. Yeah. So talk to me about these pieces. So yeah, I will actually take you to the beginning of okay. this story. Um, so I have a bunch of like just unfinished sketchbooks, as you know, in general, every artist does, right? Mm -hmm. My mind kind of just gets lost in that medium. I'm not so worried about like the technical aspect of how I'm applying it down. Um, and it's just so interesting to see the different ways that I can play with it at the end of the day. And it's just this like compressed black dust, you know? Um, but this is something about charcoal that I've always just been like really, really connected with versus other mediums that I have used and have now honed my skills in. But charcoal has never let me down. And so, yeah, charcoal, charcoal's my homie. So, <laughs> my favorite medium. There was something about the first piece that I did that made me feel like it needed to be on a larger scale. Yeah. People always made this comment to me whenever I did something of like significance, I guess. People would always be like, that's that voodoo magic you do, <laughs> right? And I'm sitting here like, what? I don't know, I don't know nothing about voodoo. I was like Princess and the Frog, like right? New Orleans, like, you know. I was like, that's literally all I know. Right. And so it got in my head because I was hearing it so often that I was like, well, you know, like if I did voodoo, like what kind of people would I kind of conjure up and all this kind of stuff? And so I had initially drawn that and I realized that I did a white skull immediately. And skulls and skeletons have been something that I've always 
been drawn to. It's always something that I kind of incorporate in my work somehow. What would you say like to other talented individuals who might be incredibly gifted in music or in art or in any kind of thing to like, you know, get yourself out of that comfort zone and try something new? Number one thing is just like, find out why you love what you do and just do it because you love it. It's it's really just as simple as that and trust me like everything else and everybody else will kind of just follow in place with that. So I started looking up like just white skeleton meanings and like white skeletons and voodoo and kind of all that kind of stuff and found this really cool thing about the healing side of voodoo and all I've ever heard just through either other people's stories or movies or just media depictions of it was curses and like the oh, other yeah, side. yeah, of course, you hear all this, you yeah. know, strange. So when I heard healing, I was like, huh, huh okay, like, like, let's dive into this a little bit more. Found this really cool, like, dance that's used at the beginning of like any healing practice in voodoo, especially within Haitian voodoo, and that's my culture, um, is how the dancers have this like, unrecognizable kind of potent energy that starts in their stomach. And as they dance, the energy kind of like goes from their stomach up their spine until it reaches the skull. And the dance is really intense the more it kind of goes on. And once it reaches the skull, there's a complete moment of stillness. And it's kind of like this reflection of what you're gonna leave behind before it explodes and you're on a path of like goodness and like just a better life for yourself. I get the question asked to me, like, who is your favorite uh, photographer or what have you? And there's a part of me who hates that question because quite honestly, while I love and admire many other photographers from the beginning of time, the truth of the matter is that I pull my inspiration a lot of times from theater, music, sculpture, painting, it has nothing to do with my craft. So. Where do you find your inspiration from? You know, a lot of my inspiration has just been through images in my past that I may not think about in the moment, but like after kind of just staring at my art and kind of like reflecting on it in a moment, I'll just be like, oh, that's like something that was from like way back when. And a lot of it lately um, has been just things that I've seen walking around my grandmother's neighborhood. So my grandma, basically, well, she grew up in Puerto Rico, moved to New York, and has lived in Spanish Harlem as long as I have been alive. And I remember always going to visit her and seeing these beautiful, beautiful, beautiful murals painted on local businesses that are still there today and has been there since my parents were young. Um, like, you know, the nail salon or the bodega on the street or the laundry mat. And these businesses used to get vandalized a lot. That's just kind of how it was. And they finally got some artists to come and paint these beautiful murals of icons within the Hispanic community so that people wouldn't dare come by and vandalize them. So what are your hopes and your dreams for you know your work and for your abilities to share your art with the world? Number one goal really is just to continue expanding my audience. I would love to work even larger than what I'm working on now. Like this behind me is like as tall as I am. It's like five by six feet. It's the first time I've ever worked so large, but I felt so comfortable working on this large scale that, I mean like a mural would be great, just something that's just like on a wall. Um, something in a community that means a lot to me and be in front of those eyes. Basically be like those murals that I saw when I was young growing up would just mean the world.